Okay. Let me uh, clip it on the microphone and put the lens cap back on the expensive Zeiss lens. There we go. That's one saying. Put the microphone on. There we go. Um, so, the uh, secret of lenses. Okay. Um, I should have got my chalkboard. Damn, I should have brought my chalkboard. I don't really need the chalkboard. Um, secret of lenses is that they're electrical circuits. I don't know if you know what uh, ED glass is. You got uh, extra low dispersion glass, uh, ED glass. You have uh, various variations. You, ultimately, the important thing to understand: you will not read this in any photography magazine or on any uh, website. And it pisses me. I mean, it burns my ass, and it just pisses me right into the dirt. I mean, you don't have to know this for photography, but, you know, photography is a science. I mean, you're talking about um, writing with light. I mean, you have to know what the hell is going on. And this also helps you in understanding uh, the nature of lens. Lenses are always more than the sum of their parts. Someone's like, oh, it's nine elements, and as an MTF uh, chart of so-and-so. But uh, MTF charts don't tell you everything. I'll be talking about that in a video either later today or tomorrow, is that... Uh, you have three properties ultimately that you need to uh, consider and uh, also uh, this is the secret of lenses that uh, does not leave the factories Nikon, Zeiss, Voigt, Lander, Canon is you have uh, reflective properties okay then you have uh, refractive properties obviously so whether you know what's the refractive, refractive, uh, refractive index of the lens uh, what's the front curve curvature the base curvature is an aspherical element is it a flint element is it an achromatic doublet these have to do with the geometric curvature of the lenses as so far as uh, the refract uh, the refractive properties um, the third one is the one that nobody talks about and nobody knows a damn thing about and uh, that is the uh, transmission properties uh, of the glass, which are the electrical properties of the glass. I don't know if you know this or not, but glass is a semiconductor. Yes, that's right. Um, transmission properties are always electrical properties. So let's look at one thing first here, and then we'll understand something. Okay, we have a lens here. Okay, we know it has a certain reflectivity. Obviously, you don't want ghosting issues, and you want maximum transmission because the lens is certainly much more than one element. So uh, as a, the, the uh, light passes uh, through one element, it is refracted on the front and the rear, and then it actually has to pass through an air gap to the second element. If we have uh, bad um, or no uh, coatings on uh, the secondary element or bad coatings on the rear element, then we have uh, internal bouncing of light, and that's bad because that causes ghosting issues causes issues with flare and a lot of the modern lenses especially the zooms you're looking at like 20 plus elements so you got lens air gap lens air gap lens air gap and that's a problem so you have to have superior coatings now those are actually crystalline coatings they're actually vacuum deposited sputtered onto the lens they're microscopic crystalline coatings that are actually grown on the surface of the lens um, they're uh, typically called uh, air coating uh, nanoparticle coating, same principle, totally different process. So there we have the reflective properties of a lens, which isn't necessarily the lens or uh, the semiconductive uh, hunk of glass itself, but it is ultimately part of it because it has to do with light transmission and how much reflectance has occurred. Secondly, obviously, we have the refractive properties of a lens. Uh, you know, aspherical, ED glass, flint elements, uh, front curvature, base curvature, you know exactly how well and how precise that lens is actually ground at the factory and uh, the uh, the specifications within which uh, max and minimum tolerance that lens is being able to be made and uh, obviously how everything lines up and uh, of course that has to do with ultimately uh, checking uh, for uh, uh, skewed elements and whatnot but uh, you know is strictly the uh, refractive properties of the glass now something else that also changes the refractive properties of glass and these two are tied together and this is actually what pisses me off is that ed doped glass and all glass like i was telling you in a prior video that zeiss and contacts and some others still use lead in their glass because that lead has superior refractive properties um, 
it has been uh, greatly replaced by Nikon and Canon's replaced all of it and Pentax has replaced all of it and that's why hardcore pros will actually tell you the modern lenses are worse than the old lenses and if you actually are able to look some of those 50 year old contacts and uh, those old sonar lenses you'll be you know you'd go oh my god man I mean I don't have no lens at all today that can do this um, that was not strictly uh, much tighter quality control tolerances which certainly existed back then when they made things slow and steady and very meticulously and everything now is on a cookie cutter you know daisy chain of uh, factory floor assembly lines I mean even at Carl Zeiss for example um, what pisses me off is that people don't realize and uh, nobody makes mention of this is that uh, one of the really key components of glass is its transmission properties uh, which have to do with what it is doped with. I mean, zirconium dioxide, calcium fluoride, uh, titanium dioxide, lanthanum dioxide, uh, zirconium dioxide, calcium fluoride, uh, I already mentioned titanium dioxide. You know, all these transmission properties are electrical. So you have a coating, okay? We know about the coatings, you know, nanoparticle or, or air anti-reflective coating. We know about the refractive properties of glass based on curvature, front and rear, how it actually refracts the light. Now, the properties that occur after it reaches the refractive index of the front of the lens and the coating, what hap actually happens before it reaches the rear of that glass is super, super important. Now, here's a question that nobody will answer for you and nobody has a damn clue about. Nobody. Even the people that actually build these lenses. Well, we know if we dope this glass in its creation, while it's still molten with the uh, lanthanum dioxide or lead or niobium or uh, zirconium, that it will change the refractive index properties. It'll actually not only change that, but depending on how you dope it, the properties, I mean, the, the concentrations you dope it with, it'll actually change uh, how uh, the uh, the compression spectrum of certain, you know, whether it's red in spectrum or blue in spectrum, how it actually changes that glass. Now, this is incurring not in the uh, the refractive properties of the front or the rear of the glass, nor in the coatings. It is occurring in the damn effing glass itself. Self. And this is actually one of the most key important components of glass that nobody taught. Well, so, well it's got a refractive index of so and so. It's got an anti reflective coating. So, the real thing that actually affects about 60% of how these lenses perform outside of quality control, outside of how well they're polished and centered and everything, outside, you know, ignoring all of that, 60% or more of uh, you know the micro contrast and the pure color rendition and properties of what makes a lens either a piece of shat or just like the tits is the electrical properties all transmission properties of a lens outside once you remove uh, the refractive and once you remove the coatings we're talking about just the pure freaking glass itself while it's in the middle while the light is in the middle of the glass Okay, after it's left the front, before it's at the back, after it's left the coating, what's happening in there is the transmission, the semiconductive properties of it. light as a circuit. You know, if you think there are little particles pouring through your lenses called photons, and you are smoking some serious crack. Light is a longitudinal compressive and decompressive, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, point of a transmission, and transverse to that are uh, little pistons of electrical and mag Light is a freaking circuit, just like, you know, you plug your lamp into the wall socket, you know, you have an electrical circuit. Light is an effing electrical circuit. And what, do you, what the hell do you think they're doping these lenses with, and what do you think they're doping them for? You know, if glass is glass, then everything should strictly be based upon the refractive index and the quality of manufacture and the, uh, the level or quality of the nanoparticle coating or what is typically, as is most often the case, uh, the anti-reflective vacuum deposited crystalline coating on the front and rear of the lens. The most important crap that makes a lens good or bad, like I said, outside of, you know, it being very precisely made and high levels, of, you know, if you ignore all the rest of that crap, the important part is the transmission electrical properties of the lens. Okay, and you actually can't map that out in a CAD. What they do do, however, is they say, well, if a lens has a certain thickness and it is doped with, say, 2% lanthanum dioxide and it has a front refractive uh, index of so-and-so and a rear refractive index of so-and-so, if it is doped with this percentage of niobium dioxide or zirconium dioxide, it will have a refractive index, you know. But that, 
that is uh, explicative. It is not uh, descriptive. Uh, excuse me, it's descriptive but not explicative. So what actually happens inside the glass is incredibly important. And this is something nobody will talk about in any photography magazine. And, you know, all these photographers out there will talk about, well, this is a really good glass. You know, this is a Zeiss lens. It's very expensive. It's got high-quality manufacture. And, you know, it might have a nanocrystalline particle coating on the front and rear. And, you know, it's a... Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a really good lens, and it's got great micro contrast. They can't tell you anything. If people think that lenses are strictly quality manufacture, let's ignore that part, okay? Which, of course, is very important, but let's ignore it. That is a strictly refractive index and, uh, you know, coatings. And it's not. The secret shit in all these lenses that make them so important, whether they are, that they are awesome or they just suck ass, are their transmission properties or their electrical properties. It's like building a really good resistor or capacitor, how that actually affects the light passing through it. That is why every lens manufacturer today, if you get up right near the top, some of these old cooters that have been there 30, 40, they'll tell you that you, know, you can plug all this crap into the computer and uh, you'll spit out a, a perfect lens according to the CAD program of lens design, but that doesn't mean it'll be a good lens because lenses are always more than the totality of their components. There is a magic and a secret to making these lenses and, they, and you know sometimes they hit them right but mo more often than not they hit them wrong and that's why people like Zeiss and uh, Nikkor and stuff the most secret most secret stuff at the very top that they'll you know that they'll basically you know threaten your life with and it's been recorded that it's, been, that it's happened in the past um, is uh, the uh, the makeup of how they design their lenses and what they're doped with and in what percentages and where it's added at in the process of making the glass. And it kind of blows my mind that nobody talks about this. Some people talk about their coatings of the glass and the refractive properties, but the most important aspect of any lens is its electrical properties, its transmittive properties and how it actually compresses uh, what end of the spectrum or the entire end of the spectrum and uh, this affects micro contrast, color saturation, um, it affects a resolution, it affects chromatic aberration, all of this important stuff is not based upon the refractive properties or the coating properties of the lenses rather the actual transmission i.e. electrical properties of the glass itself not the front curvature, not the rear curvature, not the element coating on the front or rear or the lack thereof, but strictly the damn glass. Because that is the secret formula that makes up these glasses. The secret formula to Zeiss and any other lens has nothing to do, you'd be, someone can measure what the refractive index of this damn lens is and uh, you know, measure the front curvature and they can actually tell what sort of uh, specific uh, layering of anti-reflective coating are in each one of these lenses, but what they can't tell you is uh, what properties these lenses are doped with, I mean what chemicals these lenses are doped with. See, it's not chemical, the chemical additives to the glass has to do with the transmission or the electrical properties of the glass. And while you could actually grind the glass up to powder and determine, well, it's got 4% niobium dioxide in it, that still can't tell you the dispersion rate or where it is added in the process of manufacture. And all that stuff is the hardcore secret stuff that sits right at the top of Zeiss and Leica and the rest of these people that they'll never, ever release. And uh, that's what makes up uh, each lens being a, a turd or whether it's magical or just frigging awesome. Um, but I thought you'd find that uh, interesting, and uh, it's something nobody else talks about, but it's incredibly important, and uh, that's the most important part of a lens. You know, obviously quality manufacture and whatnot is incredibly important, and, uh, you know, how well it's put together and uh, quality control, but outside of that, and outside of the refractive properties and the reflective uh, properties of a lens, what makes a lens uh, either uh, sink or swim, as far as it being just absolute crap or absolutely awesome or the transmission or the electrical properties of these lenses and uh, that's the secret sauce that uh, makes up these lenses that uh, Zeiss and everybody else doesn't talk about and uh, that is an undeniable hardcore damn fact if anybody wants to debate me on that you have at it because uh, I'll just uh, I'll drive your you know I'll drive your fanny right into the dirt on that because it is undeniable glass is a semiconductor and the reason these lenses are doped with certain elements is not, you know, for the hell of it. 
it's because it changes the electrical properties of the lenses so far as the circuit of light and how it changes and compresses and you know affects the uh, chromatic aberration and those are not uh, refractive properties those are transmissive properties okay dielectric permittivity and magnetic permeability okay yes lenses are actually electrical circuits because glass is a circuit of electricity or how the hell else did you think solar panels worked <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching bye